So let me get that loaded. See the in general, the mechanism by which the plant shows its movements or transportation or of different means uh, like uh, different kinds something called uh, uh, nastic movements what is called nastic movements in plants towards how the plant moves and transports its substances towards the external stimulations okay or uh, in accordance with the external stimulations so what are the external stimulations what are the external factors which controls the movement in plants or transportation in plants transportation in plants what factors Hmm? or the processes at least say plant can move or transport substances towards light right what substances are transported to which spot towards light we saw photosynthesis right we saw photosynthesis what is required for photosynthesis hmm water okay light carbon dioxide whatever where the water is absorbed is yes. water and minerals fine chemicals where the water is absorbed from the soil through the roots okay water is absorbed from the soil through the roots along with water what else also absorb the other nutrients okay from the soil what else also absorb along with water the other nutrients right so where do they go from root where do they go leaves where the leaves are present where the leaves are present on top of the plant see look at here water is absorbed from the roots means through the roots from the soil it goes and it goes okay root and then stem branches leaves so water is transported you agree with me water is transported along with water all minerals are transported so this is one mode of transportation in plants they call it as what what it is called what it is called accent of sap what it is called accent of sap ascending order from the bottom to the top the water is transported along with water the nutrients are transported okay that's one mode of transport in plants how it occurs what is the conduction system kaushik what is the conduction system for water and nutrients in plants xylem is the tissue vascular tissue xylem is the tissue which conducts water and nutrients from soil to the top of the plant the leaves the site of photosynthesis is it clear that's one thing yes sir yeah and another one is actually called what transpiration so what supports the movement what supports the movement the second important thing which is actually called what transpiration 
what is transpiration ah uh, evaporation of water molecules from the cells of leaves okay this is called what trans in the aerial part of the plant water is absorbed transported through xylem to the leaves and because of the sunlight the energy it is evaporated the temperature water is evaporated that process is called what transpiration can you understand that process is called what transpiration okay what is accent of so accent of sir water and minerals movement of water and nutrients from root to leaves it is called what accent of sap how it occurs through the xylem what process supports transpiration is it clear now one common man question Ten liter of water is absorbed by the plant and transported by the xylem. How much of water is used for photosynthesis, and how much of water is lost by transpiration? You understand my question? the amount of water absorbed by the root is 10 liter okay in a day how much of water is used for photosynthesis how much of water may be lost because of transpiration you just your opinion means your own options you can get hmm 50-50. You are telling 50-50. 5 liter of water transpiration. 5 liter of water for photosynthesis. Is it so? Maybe option one is okay. 5 liter. 5 liter. Option two. Okay. 7 liter. 3 liter. Means 70-30%. Fifty, fifty, seventy, thirty. Any other option? I will give you some option. See, like in percentage, basically. Third option is nine point nine liter for transpiration. Point one liter for photosynthesis. option 4 9.9 liter for photosynthesis and then 0.1 liter for transpiration what is correct third one why ah photosynthesis needs less water see the real picture is 99% of water is lost by transpiration plant absorbs lot of water through root 99% of water is lost by transpiration process then less than 1% okay less than 1% only used for what photosynthesis and other plant metabolic processes okay only 1% is used 1% used now you justify what is the advantage and disadvantage of transpiration kaushik you get my question the condition is 99% of water is lost by 
transpiration and the question is what is the advantage and disadvantage of transpiration you all get my question yes sir yes all of you what is the answer your own comments you can give is transpiration good or bad in good means in what way it is good bad means in what way it is bad your justification nothing is wrong you just try hmm bad bad because lot of water is lost so transpiration is a waste to process okay good means what justification you can give hmm ah uh, see if lot of water is absorbed 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 then only little of nutrients can be absorbed nutrients are dissolved in very less concentration in water okay so for example we need um uh, cash money okay we are in this room the only source for our money is it should in the air it should fly okay in the air it should uh, fly okay you have to catch hold of it for your uh, personal purpose if more of air comes you get more of money you agree with me air has to pass through this way cash should fly in the air you have to catch hold of it if more air goes you get more cash yes or no if less air goes you get less cash similarly like that if transpiration pull is more more of water is lost the plant gets more of nutrients from the soil if transpiration pull is less no water is pulled away no nutrients are absorbed can you understand in that way transpiration is very very important for the plant and another matter is actually plant water is lost plant does not need that much of water can you understand no matter the income or outgoing of the water the entry and exit of the water is not a big issue it can manage it can absorb it has a different system to absorb the water protect the water store the water whatever it thing because it has vacuoles why plant cell has vacuoles of course water is going to last that's why plant cell gets the water and stores enough of it in the vacuole can you understand why animal cells do not have a big vacuole and plant cell possesses a big vacuole because water is going on going on going on by transpiration so for its metabolism what the plant cell does gets the water stores it in the vacuum so for its metabolic purpose that's why plant cell 90% of the plant cell is filled with water vacuole functional vacuole is it clear so there it stores the water vacuole contains sap new water plus other nutrients okay is it clear so if transpiration pull is there only plant can get enough of nutrient so it is advantageous for the plant okay fine even though the water is lost that is the only way to get the nutrients of its own interest okay so that's one thing so accent of sap one transportation bulk transportation of thing which occurs through the xylem the second thing called translocation what is the second process it is called what translocation 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 say translocation is nothing but where the food is produced in the plant in the leaf by what process photosynthesis 
from leaf the plant food substance need to be transported to all part of the body from the leaf to the stem to the root all part of the body okay left right all direction la the food has to be transported that process is called what translocation what is translocation movement of food particles from leaf to all part of the plants movement of food particles from leaves to all part of the plant is called what translocation this occurs through phloem okay what is the vascular tissue which controls translocation it is phloem okay transport of food and other substances okay from leaves the photosynthesis la food is synthesized and from leaves to all parts of the plant in the process is called what translocation it occurs through phloem can you see phloem is it clear so the major mechanism by which the food the nutrients are transported in plant is in a through xylem and phloem the processes are called what ascent of sap from root to aerial part of the plant through xylem translocation from leaf to all part of the plant okay through phloem translocation okay main conduction system transportation system in plants okay conduction and transportation system in plants and the little you should know about the, the elements of means xylem and phloem are the conduction system in plants yes or no xylem and phloem are the conduction system vascular tissues what are the elements of xylem and phloem xylem will have have you heard ah uh, okay very good tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma xylem fiber do you remember in plant tissues tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma xylem fiber is it clear these are all the four components of xylem and then phloem components sieve tube elements companion cells phloem fiber phloem parenchyma ah sieve cells are the sieve tube sieve cells sieve tube elements together they are called what sieve cells and sieve tubes called sieve tube elements sieve elements sieve cells and sieve tubes nearby companion cells nearby phloem fiber and then phloem parenchyma can you understand in your class 9 i think you have studied tissues of plants so xylem components and phloem components supports the transportation in plants is it clear transportation in plants what what where upward movement you can see where upward movement you can see where upward movement you can see in plant upward movement xylem what transpiration ascent of sap there you can see upward movement where you can downward and all other movement phloem translocation can you understand fine now what is the function of leaves in transportation what leaf does in plants hmm what leaf does exchange of gases of course exchange of gases synthesis of food basically okay synthesis of food okay now 
there are different uh, mechanism which supports the movement of substances okay what are all the other factors which supports the transportation in plants the kind of movements you can call in simple active transport have you heard about it passive transport what is called active transport what is called active transport it requires energy okay if any transport requires energy for the transportation movement of substances that is called what active transport what is the energy currency of the cell atp so active transport requires energy they may ask if food is prepared it should be transported through phloem it requires energy okay it requires what energy okay and then the other factors which supports transportation of substances see for the water to get absorbed with other dissolved substances what is required osmotic pressure what is called osmotic pressure osmosis means what movement of water it depends upon solute potential what is called solute what is called a solute the substances which is dissolved in the water silicon there are two compartments okay outside the cell inside the cell if more substances are here less substances are here both are present in it is a solution compartment a compartment b where solute potential is more in compartment a solute potential is more in compartment b water potential is more now where water will move from which compartment to which compartment water will move here water potential is more so it is b to a when less solutes are there more water potential see if any substances which here the substances which are very less so potential of water is more no this is not a contains more solute s yes. mm -hmm. ah high not higher concentration higher potential water moves from higher potential to lower potential where the water potential is more a ah no b see you just think in a glass of water you added 10 spoon of salts now solute will have more potential than water this is a solute potential is more in the compartment b a glass of water where only half spoon of sugar now solute potential is less in compartment b water potential is more in compartment a sorry b water is more potential in a solute is having more potential in a water is having less potential in a solute is having less potential can you understand now where the water will move from b to a for example this is inside of the cell this is outside of the cell okay this is inside and outside of the cell water moves from inside to outside this process is called what endosmosis or exosmosis 
exo osmosis from inside to outside water moves exo osmosis okay exo osmosis what is endo osmosis if water comes here it occurs for example here less concentration here more concentration this is outside this is inside of the cell now water is having more potential here so it gets inside this is called what endo osmosis okay movement of water in and out of the cell is exo and endo osmosis see translocation transpiration accent of sap or actually called what bulk transport mechanism in plants osmosis is cell membrane transport what is called cell membrane transport from inside of the cell outside of the cell movement should move right water would movement from inside and in from inside to outside outside to inside is called what osmosis this is one thing one mode of transportation and then something called diffusion what is called a diffusion movement of substances from higher concentration to lower concentration maybe ions gases and all diffuse okay that is called what diffusion so osmosis one process cell to cell transport diffusion one process okay osmosis diffusion one process there are two type of diffusion you know that simple diffusion facilitated diffusion what is it simple diffusion facilitated diffusion what are the components of cell membrane phospholipid bilayer protein channels are present in the cell membrane if the movement of substances occurs through the phospholipid bilayer it is called what simple diffusion cell membrane is impermeable to charged substances ions and all cannot move through the cell membrane so they diffuse through what ion channel sodium is an ion it enters into the cell by sodium channel potassium is an ion it is high inside the cell it exits of the cell by potassium channel okay so movement of substances in and out of the cell occurs through simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion can you understand simple diffusion water osmosis what is osmolarity what is called osmolarity number of active molecules in a substance okay number of osmoles means what osmoles means what active molecules osmoles means what active molecules okay active molecules osmoles for example always sodium is high even you can take animal cell as an example to understand this process in our extracellular fluid sodium is high in our intracellular fluid potassium is high so a particular when you go for any blood test and all they will take your blood and they will analyze the electrolytes sodium level potassium level calcium level chloride level all ion substances level they will be analyzing if potassium level is low what do they call if potassium is level is very low in your blood what do they call hypokalemia what is hypokalemia low level of potassium in your blood if your blood is having low level of potassium you will get lot of complications okay so every clinical conditions can be connected with that is it clear so cell 
inside and outside of the cell the concentration of substances the osmolarity of the substances has to be maintained okay osmolarity proper osmolarity has to be maintained okay always a constant amount of substances has to be level has to be maintained so that is another factor for movement of substances in and out of the cell can you understand concentration of substances in and out of the cell creates osmolarity and pressure which supports the movement of substances in and out of the cell and then also you have root pressure what is called the root pressure there should be always root should not store the water molecule is it clear what happens if root is storing as much of water as possible so you have seen watermelon okay watermelon you have seen what is the important of watermelon stores lot of water where in the fruit portion it is a creeper watermelon plant is a creeper means it grows on flat surface okay like snake plant like that it is also called snake plant creepers are called snake plant how snake goes like that watermelon is there little root only it is having okay if it if the root stores lot of water how the transportation is achieved so root should not transport means store water always the water should be sent out from the root the pressure should be there means there should be a vacuum then only water can be absorbed where the water should go and get stored in the fruit portion can you understand so this creates a pressure in the root always if the water is always transported upward there is always a pressure vacuum is there so space is there for the water to enter so water enters transported water enters transported can you understand so the transportation of plants you can differentiate into two ways first you must understand the bulk transport mechanism what are the bulk transport mechanism ascent of sap transpiration translocation through xylem and phloem they are the bulk transport mechanism also consider cell level transport in plants just keep it in mind this occurs through osmosis one cell to outside inside of the cell to outside diffusion for that what supports osmotic pressure root pressure all these things supports a lot for the movement of substances okay when you go to your higher class you also will be studying about the other pathways like synplast pathway apoplast pathway okay there are different pathways how xylem and phloem now xylem and phloem transport that's what we study but when you go to your higher class you will be studying that also so transportation in plants is it clear fine so shall we start with the other kutti chapter excretion right we'll continue on yes before that some simple questions can i ask each one one question okay hari what is exosmosis and endosmosis yourself anirudh ah water moves from inside to outside exosmosis endosmosis inside endosmosis s rohit what is what are the two type of conduction system in plant vascular tissues conduction system in plants xylem and phloem what xylem will do what phloem will do hmm food to all parts of the body yes what are the components of xylem
very good what are the components of phloem hmm. hmm. phloem fiber phloem parenchyma very good okay so all these structures may be your higher class you just know the name of the components in higher class you study in detail but you should know basic all these things is it clear so anything you have to get clarified before going to the next chapter anything else fine we'll continue va see osmolarity means what see movement of the always see listen cell membrane is always permeable to what water water can always move either from outside freely diffuse cell membrane cannot stop water you come you go it's your wish cell membrane says movement of water is your wish if you want you come if you don't want you go out okay always permeable then how water is moving in and out of the cell depends upon the molecule concentration okay water or the movement is not just directly connected with water but it is depending upon what the osmols molecule which is present either inside the cell or outside the cell in higher class also you study isotonic solution what is isotonic solution yeah this is inside this is outside same concentration of solutes isotonic solution the cell is called flacid f l a c c i d no movement of water that take okay if second condition less water inside more water outside more solute outside tonicity okay a word a word we use it called what tonicity to determine the concentration of solutes in the water tonicity okay tonicity means what it is this hypertonic outside the solution which is highly concentrated concentration of solutes basically tonicity means it tells about the concentration of the solute in the water it is hypertonic very low outside the cell it is hypertonic high concentrated solution obviously it supports what exo osmosis so now water is here water is not moving in and out because it is similar tonicity in the first condition same concentration of solutes in and out so water is not moving in and out equilibrium here high concentration of solute outside so pressure is there osmon pressure is there so water will there is a difference illa yeah? pressure in water ulla high water potential velila low water potential so obviously water move from high potential to low potential a pressure gradient gradient is present on the other hand you can see ulla high concentrated velila less concentrated it is endo osmosis okay water moves from outside to inside so the molecule concentration here water is not moving here moving in to out here moving out to in how molecule concentration only determines that okay so that creates a pressure for the water to move to move okay fine good so shall we continue the next process the last process of life processes excretion so as of now we have discussed about nutrition in plants and animals respiration in plants and animals transportation in plants and animals especially human beings nutrition in human beings and plants respiration in human beings and plants transportation in human beings and plants now excretion in human beings and plants okay what are the excretory organs we have how excretion occurs what is excretion removal of waste from the body how waste is excreted out of the body before that you should know what are the different forms of waste what are the different forms of waste gas form waste is there in our body 
solid form waste is there liquid water soluble form waste is there so the gas form of waste is how it is excreted out expiration carbon dioxide also why we get bad odor body lung gas is excreted out also from the skin skin is an excretory organ gases substances and in our sweat bad chemicals also water soluble chemicals also coming out that's why sweat is giving bad odor we use deodorant for that means waste or excreted out through skin and breath bad smell will come okay and then solid wastes how it is excreted out lower part of your digestive tract large intestine all digestive wastes are excreted by solid waste solid waste are excreted by your colon rectum anus okay all solid digestive wastes are excreted out and why in excretion we are connecting it with kidney 70% of the body is made up of water so most of the substances after all the metabolism is happening in the water inside the body so most of the wastes are also produced in the water okay water contains all waste substances most of the wastes come to water adilla how we classify organisms especially what waste nitrogenous waste nitrogenous waste okay nitrogenous waste what is called nitrogenous waste what is the main component of nitrogen means what are the macro molecules which are required for the body to function we need protein we need carbohydrates we need lipids okay we need we have dna whatever so carbohydrates after its utilization glucose broken down gas is carbon dioxide is produced it is released of course water glycolysis la carbon dioxide through respiration that water waste water through excretion urinary system is it clear the protein is waste the protein what is the protein building blocks of the cell proteins are converted into what form nitrogenous wastes protein wastes are called what nitrogenous wastes protein wastes are called what nitrogenous wastes based on the kind of nitrogenous wastes producing the organisms are classified into different types you know that ammonotelic organism ureotelic organism ureotelic organism you know that what is ammonia organisms nitrogenous wastes are excreted as ammonia uric acid urea okay three forms of wastes majority like animals aquatic animals will excrete as ammonia aquatic birds uric acid animals other animals like us humans urea okay based on this how we are classified ammonotelic organism ureotelic organism and ureotelic organism okay so nitrogenous wastes which are water soluble in the body are excreted by excretory system human excretory system is it clear what are the component of human excretory system we have a kidney pair of kidney and we have ureter pair of ureter what comes out of the kidney is called what ureter and then urinary bladder and then urethra and urine is excreted through external genitalia 
we call our excretory system is what as what urogenital system what do we call urogenital system why urinary system and genital systems together works okay we have same combined function that's why our urinary system is called what urogenital system okay for reproduction also this organs are involved and for excretion also these organs are involved that's why in animals in humans our excretory system is also called what urogenital system okay fine now what are the components as i said kidney what is happening in kidney urine is formed simple urine is formed in the kidney what is the basic unit of kidney neuron nephron sorry you not neuron nephron nephrons are the basic unit of kidney functional unit of kidney is nephron what hari listening functional unit of kidney is nephron okay millions of nephrons in one kidney how many kidney we have two kidneys we have two kidney left right here can you see this is one this is one two kidney pair of kidney two kidney in one kidney one million of cells then in two kidney two million nephrons are present okay fine from kidney what comes out ureta okay so we have pair of kidney pair of ureter from left kidney one ureter from right kidney one ureter and then one common urinary bladder you can see here this is the urinary bladder where urine is stored okay and then you have one we have one urethra okay urinary bladder and urethra they are the components of kidney now this is the anatomy of course renal artery and renal vein blood oxygenated blood comes and goes deoxygenated blood flows okay artery and vein what is the function of artery and vein artery supply oxygenated blood veins collect deoxygenated blood so blood should come into the kidney then it should get filtered and it should go for that arteries and veins are present in the kidney you can see renal artery renal vein okay renal artery and renal vein both of the sides you have left right is it clear now how urine is formed that's the main thing you need to understand about kidney okay how urine is formed look at that what is the functional unit of kidney nephron if you understand the structure of nephron and connect it with the function you can understand the working function of kidney okay look into that there are three parts this part is called what glomerulus you can see blood vessels coming in going out okay so blood enters into this here you can see a cup shaped structure here blood comes and goes this unit is called what glomerulus okay this is called what glomerulus apparatus here what occurs ultra filtration what occurs ultra filtration what occurs ultra filtration and the other part you can see the yellow color tubes here 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 they call it as what convoluted tubules they are called what second part are actually called what tubules glomerulus one part and then tubules they are called what second part called what tubules there are two type front portion of the tubule is called what pct proximal convoluted tubule last part is called what distal convoluted tubule okay proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule it is the highly coiled structure the function of the tubule is see water 99% of the water is filtered here per day 180 liter of water is filtered here 
in ultra filtration how many liter of water is filtered 180 liter and second in glomerulus apparatus water is filtered what is the function of tubules reabsorption reabsorption tubular reabsorption in reabsorption what occurs water is filtered 99% of water is again taken back reabsorbed with other important good minerals and nutrients sodium bicarbonate all these substances are reabsorbed so in urine formation three step what is the first step ultra filtration which occurs through glomerulus apparatus second step is reabsorption occurs through proximal and distal convoluted tubule tubules okay third is secretion they call it as what secretion means to maintain that osmotic pressure osmotic balance some substances are secreted into the convoluted tubules tubules kullara some substances like potassium ion again sometimes water they are secreted into the water tubules that is called what secretion secretion or also called tubular secretion listen three steps in urine formation glomerulus filtration tubular reabsorption tubular secretion so there is another unit called you can see here loop of henle ascending and descending the one which downs descending and then ascending here concentration of urine occurs okay concentration of urine occurs okay now the concentrated urine is drained into the collecting duct common collecting duct urine is drained into the common collecting duct is it clear you can see this is one nephron this is one nephron this is one nephron this is one nephron this is common for all nephrons okay many nephrons are connected to this common collecting duct that's why kidney can ah uh, ah uh, yeah see in kidney you can see how the, this is the kidney outer region is called cortex inner region is called medulla here in the cortex region you have nephron or a glomerulus and tubules the loop of henle all these things is extended into the medulla region so in a kidney from the cortex to the medulla the nephron is extended so it is highly coiled tubule long lengthy tubule that's why it is helpful for secretion can you understand long tubule that's a tube tube means what long structure tubules proximal distal convoluted tubule or long in structure is it clear fine so that is about the excretion in human beings i told you 180 liter per day water is filtered but urine is how urine is concentrated just 1.5 liter less than 1% only converted concentrated into urine other or good substances good water reabsorb other is reabsorb can you understand fine this is hemodialysis in kidney failure patient kidney will not work see blood is collected from the artery and then it is sent to the apparatus their filtration occurs and then blood is again wastes are collected blood is again pumped back into the blood if people are having kidney failure they go for hemodialysis okay how excretion occurs in plants just one minute gases through leaves okay photosynthesis or waste oxygen is excreted through leaves transpiration la water some substances get rid of water soluble substances get rid of transpiration okay sometimes the old part will fall off waste substances are stored in any part of the plant like leaves or stem or outer cork or whatever 
it will fall off. Can you understand? So these are all the mechanisms by which plant can old leaf, old stem, old branches or fell off. Okay, they will fell off. So like that plant also excrete wastes. No specific organs. All part of the organ contributes. Leaf contributes. Root contributes. Stem contributes. Most of the part of the body contributes. Vacuoles. They are called excretory vacuoles. Transpiration contributes. All processes together controls excretion in plants. Okay. So I just rushed and finished. I know. Just to give you some time to prepare well. Soon you will be having maybe the assignment. Today they said I think they will. I am supposed to set the assignment. So life processes. Please go through. I would have missed some vital uh, informations. So go through. If you are not able to follow anything. You come for discussion. So they will inform you. Okay. Today only I think I am going to set the question paper. They will give other informations later. 